Raise your hand if you want to become an even better writer. Everybody wants to be better. The harder you work, the better you get. So I'm going to show you a strategy this week that will make your writing even better. And the strategy is called show, not tell. So when you do the strategy, show, not tell, you're going to show your reader what's going on instead of just telling them. How can you show them? It's not a movie. I can't actually like give them pictures. Well, I could give them pictures, but I can't really like play a movie for them if it's a book. But you're going to describe things and really make them feel like they were there to show them so that they could close their, their eyes and have that movie in their mind that they can really see all those details instead of just telling them a quick sentence about what happened. It makes your writing a lot more juicy. So let's um, look at some examples. I've got some books here that are that have really good examples of show not tell. First thing is where the wild things are. The author, Marie Sendek, could have just said that the wild things were mad. The wild things were mad, but he didn't do that. Instead, he gave us this showing sentence that has all of these descriptions telling us um, how they were mad. So I'm going to read you the sentence the author actually used, and I want you to see if they use if he used the word mad at all. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. So he showed us they were mad by the things that they were doing. They were roaring. They showed their really nasty teeth and their and their eyes, and they showed their claws. It's like a picture of these these beasts just being really mad. But the author didn't say the word mad. So that's what a showing sentence is. It really shows the reader. It gives them those those pictures in their mind that they can see what it would look like instead of just flat out saying um, the sentence. So let's do another example. This book is called. Oh, you should recognize this one. The rain came down. We read this one. All right, so in the rain came down, the author could have just told us that it was sunny. They could have just literally said the sentence, it was sunny. Three words, kindergarten sentence. Instead, they showed us how it was sunny. It says, the sun came out and the air smelled fresh and sweet. Everything shimmered and a rainbow stretched across the rooftops. So that's how we knew that it went from raining to being sunny. He did say that the same sun came out, but then gave us so many more details because when it stops raining, the air is fresh and sweet. Things look shimmery when the sunlight is shining on them and a rainbow might come after the rain. So showing us so we could close our eyes and picture that instead of just, it was sunny and moving on. That's what we don't want to do is just give everybody a quick, um, kindergarten sentence and then move on with our writing. We want to give lots and lots of details about um, what's going on around and part, uh, you know, the rest of the, the story, but we would see if we were actually there, we'd smell, see, hear, smell, taste, and touch if we were there. So you see those five senses. In the book, I Need My Monster, the author could have simply told us on this page, I was scared of the monster done, moved on, turn the page. But instead of doing a short sentence that's not super impressive, the author showed us. So close your eyes and listen to this sentence. See if you could tell that this kid was scared. Then the bed trembled as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. He was daring me to guess where he might pop up. I shivered. Do you see how that makes it scary? just adding in those those descriptions of the bed trembling having a spiked tail being unsure of where this monster is going to pop up from that makes you kind of scared and then he shivered those are all ways that we can see that somebody is scared they showed us showed us instead of told us and now here's the book louder lily the author could have simply told us lily got angry done but this is a kindergarten sentence, three words, not much to it. If your story is full of kindergarten sentences, it makes it like a level A, B, C, really easy book to read. We want books that have, really have a lot of um, details that make them interesting. 
So look how the author showed us that Lily was angry without using the word angry. Lily's face burned. Her mouth tasted like Tabasco sauce. So that would be like hot. From deep inside came a voice so loud it made the windows rattle, the desks rumble, and the rug come up off the floor. Stop it! Can you tell she's mad? Yeah, they didn't say anywhere in there that she was mad. They didn't use the word angry or mad, but face burning, your mouth feeling like hot, and it comes from deep inside you that you scream and that she screams, stop it. You can tell she's mad. Now, the picture helped with that as well. But we're not talking about pictures when it comes to show, not tell. We're talking about showing with our words. Okay, so now you have a little idea of what show, not tell is. So why is show, not tell important to use? Remember I said it makes your sentences juicy. It gives your readers more details, helps them to make a movie in their mind that they can see all those different pieces that they wouldn't see if you just told them a quick sentence. It is cold. She was mad. They are scared. Okay. And it takes it from what sounds like a kindergarten writing to much more advanced writing. So now that you know what it is and why you should use it, the next lessons will be learning how to use it. All right.